entity's search for purpose is relentless. Welcome. Today's doodle was based on the word ominous, and for this peculiar doodle, we are coming back to the beast, which seems to be in the middle of a hunt, trying to reach for these masked creatures that seem to have realized how deceptive it was and seem to have found some kind of way to try to stop it. But first, let's begin by the initial pathway that led me back to this scene, which was the organic groove, which states that entities grow their own shelter. And the reason why it brought me back to this scene and to these two kind of characters, which are the beast and this plant colony, is that both of them, each of them, somehow really visually ended up growing their own shelter from the abyss garden. On one hand we have the beast, which as it began to come back to life after the events that occurred a few weeks back. We saw that all the goo that surrounded it slowly turned into some webby structure in order to protect its body and to allow it to move around. And on the other hand, this plant creature, this plant colony, somehow turned all of these floating rocks and this polished stones into its own gigantic shelter, its own network of safety. So that's the pathway that led me back to these characters. But now let's read the second pathway that kind of brought me to the evolution of the scenes that we are seeing today. The second pathway was the nurturing tower, which states that entities evolve protect their inner selves. And so here, since I already had these characters in mind, so we had the beast and we had these different masked creatures that somehow live together in some kind of network of a gigantic plant colony. So this pathway led me to this idea that in the past we had the beast kind of engulfing one of these masked creatures and kind of swallowing it, absorbing it and the network disconnecting itself from this masked creature. But somehow this pathway made me interpret the plant colony's behavior as being quite protective and probably when this happened when this horrible event happened, where one of their own ended up being swallowed by the beast, we can imagine that the rest of the colony began to hurry up and to devise a plan for no other mass creature to end up suffering from the same fate. And so, that's the main reason why the last scene didn't lead up to one of these masked creatures being once again swallowed by the beast. Cause it seems like they ended up being really alert as to any potential danger. And what we see now is that actually it wasn't necessarily the beast who ended up being deceptive to these masked creatures might have been the mass creature itself that might have willingly tried to attract the beast into a dangerous spot. Because what we see now is the beast following one of these mass creatures, multiple of these mass creatures, and we see them somehow organizing themselves. We see two of them fleeting from the beast and the others kind of moving around some rocks around the beast inside of this floating stone garden and what
what we see above the doodle is a lot of these icicles, these elements that somehow provide us with the information that a storm is on its way and that the frost is coming to this place. And as far as we know, the plant colony, these mass creatures are easily able to protect themselves from the frost due to all of these inert rocks that they can use to somehow move the wind and to break the wind, to shelter themselves. But it does seem like all the web and the goo that surrounds the beast is probably quite vulnerable to such a change of climate. And it seems to be what the plant colony is aiming for. We see them basically attracting the beast into a trap in which it will have to endure the frost that is sweeping through the land. But finally, the last pathway that I drew for this doodle was the opaque bubble, which states that one's inner mechanisms are unreachable by others. And this third card and pathway kind of comforted me in this idea that the beast was probably unaware of what the plant colony and what this network of masked creatures was thinking about, what their purpose was, that all of these communication that they have in between each other seem to have led to a very elaborate plan and a very smart way of dealing with the beast while the beast was totally unaware of this potential danger. And it seems like the interloper himself, this creature that is inside of the beast and that managed to revive it, doesn't seem to have been able either to understand the plans and to foresee the events that are portrayed in this scene. I guess that we will see in the future what will happen and if the beast indeed will end up falling into this trap and be engulfed in the frost, unable to move himself and probably buried here by the plant colony, by these mass creatures. Or if the beast and the interloper will find a way to avoid this fate and to start gathering the rest of the plant colony and to start to consume their hopes and dreams. I guess we'll see in the future. But in the meantime, I hope you enjoyed this doodle. I hope you enjoyed the lore behind it and how the stories of the Abyss Garden slowly evolve over time. I hope you're having a nice day, a nice evening, a nice morning, and I'll see you tomorrow.